but I'll take you now uh, to uh, the Jubilee House where Dr. George Akufudampari takes office as a 23rd substantive IGP. The Inspector General of Police and that I will uphold, preserve, protect and defend the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana as by law established. So help me God. And finally, the oath of secrecy. I, holding the office of Inspector General of Police, do in the name of the Almighty God swear that I will not directly or indirectly communicate or reveal to any person any matter which shall be brought under my consideration or shall come to my knowledge in the discharge of my official duties except as may be required for the discharge of my official duties, or as may be specially permitted by law. So help me God. Thank you, Mr. President. May I again respectfully invite Mr. President to present the instrument of appointment to the Inspector General of Police. One with other marks, please. Thank you very much. A round of applause. To the <laughs> the Inspector General of Police may now proceed to the table to sign the oath book. Thank you very much. Mr. President, please sign this portion of the oath book.
Ladies and gentlemen, I now have the pleasure to invite the President of the Republic to deliver his remarks. <coughs> Eminent clergy, including the parish priest of Jubilee House, Reverend Canon Lamte, Vice President, Chairperson and members of the Council of State, Chief of Staff at the Office of the President and officials of the Presidency, Minister for National Security, Minister for Defense, Attorney General and Minister for Justice, Ministers, Deputy Ministers of State, newly sworn Inspector General of Police, Chief of Defense Staff of the Armed Forces, the Controller General of the Immigration Service, the Acting Director General of the Prison Service, Commissioners of Police and Senior Police Officers, Chairperson of the New Patriotic Party, fellow Ghanaians, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome all of you to Jubilee House, the seat of our nation's presidency. We are met here this afternoon to perform an important act in the life of the nation the adduction into office of a new Inspector General of Police. This is the first time since I became president on 7th January 2017 that a formal occasion has been created to swear into the office the head of our country's police service. There's been a simple, solemn ceremony of investiture. And to that end, I'm grateful for the presence of all of you. On Wednesday, 21st July, I requested the then Inspector General of Police, Mr. James Opombueno, to embark on terminal leave with effect from Sunday, the 1st of August, 2021, pending his retirement from the police service yesterday, on Thursday, 7th October, 2021. In furtherance of this, I indicated that until a substantive IGP was appointed, Commissioner of Police Dr. George Akufu Dampari, the next in command, was to serve as acting IGP. It has been an eventful two months since his appointment, and the acting IGP has left me with very little choice in the matter. His actions, which have received widespread support and acclaim from the population, vindicated the decision I made to entrust him with a mandate of heading the police, albeit in a temporary capacity. It was thus with no de degree of difficulty that I informed the Council of State of my decision to make his appointment a permanent one, subject to consultation with the Council, pursuant to Article 202, Clause 1 of the Constitution of the Republic. On Friday, 1st October 2021, I received a communication from the council informing me of the positive outcome of its consultation. Consequently, I swore in COP Dr. George Kufu Dampari a few minutes ago as our nation's 23rd Inspector General of Police. I congratulate Dr. George Kufu Dampari warmly on his appointment, and with no hesitation, say that it is a well-deserved one. He has risen through the ranks of the police service, starting off as a constable, and has served his nation dutifully. Today, he has reached the pinnacle of his career and will serve for the next four years as Inspector General of Police. He has demonstrated that he will be an effective leader of the police service and will help foster its efficiency. He will be walking in the footsteps of the 22 previous occupants of the office. And I have no doubt that in Dr. George Akufu Dampare, we have a worthy successor to Mr. James Opong Opuen, and indeed the others who have gone before him. I must at this point 
pay fulsome tribute to Mr. James Opon Buenu for his distinguished service to the police service and our nation, especially for the calm, professional manner in which he led the operations of the police to assure the peace and stability of the country during last December's presidential and parliamentary elections, a period of considerable sensitivity for the unity and welfare of the Republic. He has my lifelong respect, and I wish him a well-earned retirement. Ladies and gentlemen, the most important things for our nation are its peace, the safety of its people, and the preservation of its territorial integrity. It is when these are guaranteed that citizens can go about their normal lives in security and hope to improve on the quality of their circumstances. We all sleep feeling safe when the men and women of the police service work to keep our communities and our streets safe. Newly sworn IGP, the issue of law and order is particularly germane at this time, when the traditional challenges to security, such as chieftaincy conflicts, land disputes, religious intolerance, ethnic animosities, and political rivalry are being compounded by contemporary threats like drug and human trafficking, proliferation of small arms and light weapons, armed robberies, cyber crimes, and activities of nomadic herdsmen. That is why government is working to modernize and resource the police service adequately in order to assist it to maintain law and order and protect lives and property. I assure you, the government is determined to give whatever support it can so that we can have the service that the people of Ghana deserve. The Constitution has in Article 202, Clause 2, designated the IGP as the head of the police service and subject to the provisions of the Constitution and to the control and direction of the police council responsible, and I quote, for the operational control and the administration of the police service, unquote. As I indicated last week, at the graduation ceremony of the 50th Cadet Corps Officers Course of the Police Service. Government has put in place far-reaching measures to improve the quality of the police service and the welfare of police personnel, and we will continue to do more in the coming years. It is often said that the public is the police and the police is the public. The citizenry can only have confidence in the police service when its members are seen to be honest and enforce the law without fear or favor. Your task as IGP during your term of office is to establish a service that maintains the trust of the citizenry. It is in everybody's interest that the police service conducts itself as the principal creditable instrument of accomplishing the executive's duty of maintaining law and order in the state. Governments in our body politic have term limits, and in a multi-party democracy, parties win and lose power. It is good for the health of the nation that this should be so, and this is why the police service under your leadership should not tie its well-being or otherwise to the fortunes of the ruling party of the day. As president, and together with you as Inspector General of Police, we need to cooperate to ensure that the police service is left to focus on its core mandate and not be an appendage of the ruling party. I envisage the development of a police service that goes about its function of protecting ordinary citizens confident that there will be no interference from the powers that be. Newly sworn IGP, I believe strongly that in you 
We can help promote the development of a nation governed by the rule of law and respect for human rights, with the police being at the front line of this endeavor. The police has the primary responsibility of maintaining peace and keeping law and order in our country, and government will do its best to assist you in the police service, discharge this effectively. May God bless the new Inspector General of Police, Dr. George Akufu Dampare, and us all. And may God bless our homeland, Ghana, and make her great and strong. I thank you for your attention. We thank Mr. President for his very instructive re remarks. It's now my pleasure to invite the Inspector General of Police to respond to Mr. President's remarks. Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, Nana, Chairman of Council of States, Honorable Members of the Council of State, Madam Chief of Staff, Service Commanders, the clergy, my colleague, former members, commissioners, and other heads of security agencies here present, Honorable Ministers of State, distinguished invited guests, friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to profoundly thank His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency Nana Adu Dankwa Akufuadu, for the honor done me by appointing me as the Acting Inspector General of Police and today confirming me as the 23rd Substantive Inspector General of Police of our country. Mr. President, my family and I are most grateful to you for the confidence that you have in, that, in me to allow me to take such a position of service to our nation. I also would like to thank Mr. Vice President, for his leadership of the Police Council and his personal support and encouragement to me over the years. And I know I will continue to count on him in this regard. Equally, I would like to thank Nana Chairman of the Council of State for mentoring me over the years and other members of the Council for taking a critical look at the request of His Excellency to consider me for this position and giving your support to it. I'm most grateful. I also would like to thank my mother, the Chief of Staff, for her motherly care and support at all times, which has deepened since my appointment as the Acting Inspector General of Police. And I know now that I'm in that capacity as a substantive Inspector General of Police, more of such mother love will be extended to me for me to have the peace of mind to work together with my colleagues to keep the peace of this country. I will, at the same time, also would like to thank my sector minister, who for another very important assignment, he's not here with us today, for the cooperation, the support that he has given me over the years before even I became the Acting Inspector General of Police. And when I also became Acting Inspector General of Police, he has continued and even done more. And I know that now that I'm in the position, he will probably do three to four times what he has been doing for me. And I'm grateful to him. And I'm also very grateful to my colleagues at the service commander's level including my big brother, the Chief of Defense Staff, for all the support I've received since my appointment as the Acting Inspector General of Police. And coming to a point that we've seen that the only weapon to defeating and fighting crime 
is when we work together. And I hope we'll continue to do that in the interest of this country. And I also would like to thank my colleagues, POMA members, the commissioners who are here, and those who are not here today, and the entire police force for the outpour of love, support, understanding accorded me since I joined the service to today. And even expanding it upon my assumption of office as the acting inspector general of police. And if I have been able to do anything, it is because of that support that you've given me. So colleagues at POMAP and the entire police force, I want to say thank you very much. And as we have always been saying, we are in this together. And when we are in it together and we do it together, the resource beats people's imagination. So I hope we'll continue to stay together as a family and pursue all the things that we need to pursue in order to bring peace and tranquility to our dear nation, Ghana. So President, you've actually set the space for us in terms of what we're supposed to do. And I want to give you the assurance that working in concept with my colleagues at, within the police service and outside it, and also getting the support and the backing of the population of the country, we will be able to leave the police service better than we came to find it. So at the end of the day, if we leave the service and we are passing by and we see police people doing an excellent job, we will be proud and tell ourselves within, without anybody hearing that yet, yes, we also contributed. And as a result of that, we are seeing a different police service. And our vision has been to become a world-class police institution. And Mr. President, we are poised, we are focused in attaining that. We know it is not going to be easy. By my colleagues and I, we have made our mind that even if we are unable to take it to that destination, we, at this time, will position the organization towards that destination such that there will be no turning back. And I know it is doable, because anything that we put our mind to your heart to and stay focused on it, it will definitely come to it will definitely come to pass. So our focus is to make sure that over the years, so soon into the future, we'll become the most respected organization in the country and a reference point for Africa and beyond. Because we know that if we succeed in doing that, then at the end of the day, we'll get our respect back as an institution, the trust and confidence of the people Will, get, will come back to us in a force that will help us to deepen our legitimacy. And it is something that we are proud of if we are able to achieve. And Mr. President, finally, I would like to say that we know that as police officers and other security agencies, we happen to be one of the few who become civilians twice in our lives. Before joining the service, we are civilians, and at a retirement, we will become civilians. So our focus is that the police service we are nurturing today will be the police service that will police us and our children and our family when we come back into retirement. And knowing the privileges that we enjoy as officers now, if we are unable to institute a police system that will police us better than what is currently being done, then we will be the losers. So whatever we do today in terms of making the police service better, we do it for ourselves. And Mr. President, working in concept, in partnership, and in unity with my colleagues at all levels within the organization, we can assure you that we'll stick to it and achieve it to make you proud, to make the people of this country proud, to make our families proud, and make ourselves also proud. So Mr. President, once again, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for giving me such a rare privilege to serve my country in this capacity. And I want to assure you that I came into service with humility, with integrity, and with an understanding that when we are all in it together, the results is better. Mr. President, I thank you for the opportunity once again. Thank you, sir. Twenty-third substantive IGP of Ghana, Dr. George Ekufudampari, duly sworn in. He was appointed in acting capacity in July. In October, he has been sworn in by President Ekufado with a charge to focus on his core mandate 
as an IGP and a service and not become an appendage of the ruling party. He's also uh, been asked to establish a service that will win the trust of the Ghanaian populace. And you've been hearing the IGP himself also uh, speaking at that swearing-in ceremony. I'll take you through what he's been saying, essentially thanking uh, the president for that appointment and also reminding himself about get entering into the service with humility and then also, uh, you know, ability to serve and then also integrity. So two key words, humility and integrity, he talks about. And then also ensuring that the Ghana Police Service becomes a world-class service. Though it will not be an easy road, he admits that will happen. The president has also been assuring that the government will do its best to provide to the police service all that it needs to make them focus on that mandate and not, uh, you know, become an appendage of this ruling political party or any other uh, for that matter. And that's how, that's the swearing in ceremony uh, currently underway at the Jubilee House. But whilst we wrap up on that, because we're, we're told that it's just the closing prayer and the final formalities currently ongoing at the Jubilee House. And once again, Dr. George Akufu Dampare is now the substantive IGP 23rd. And I'll walk you through a few of his credentials and then also later we'll get to look at what he's done within the short period uh, that he's been acting up until when he's uh, been finally sworn in as the substantive IGP uh, of Ghana. Uh, there were a few uh, shakeups also in there, but we'll walk you through it. But let's go through some of his credentials right here. So Dr. George Akufudampare, we know by now, is the youngest because he's 51 and he's been appointed and he's been in the Fourth Republic. And we know that he's also the eighth youngest since Ghana gained independence prior to his disappointment. He was the most senior police officer after the just retired IGP. And, and then also Dr. Dampare joined the Ghana Police Service as a constable in December 1990 at age 20 and then rose through the ranks all the way to become Commissioner of Police, COP. 24 years later, at age 44 in 2014, the rank he held until his appointment. That's what he is, a COP, that's the rank. And then in 1991, on completion of his recruit training, Dr. Dampare was adjudged the overall best recruits at the National Police Training School and won all awards except the award for the best mask man, mask man. So that's it. And then again in 1996, he emerged the overall best cadet for the 32nd Cadet Officers course at the Ghana Police Academy, which is formerly uh, the Police College, and won all awards there also, including excellence in professional police subjects and excellence in academic subjects. Uh, we go on to others between 2010 and 2015 under the leadership of the two IGPs, former IGPs, Paul Teriakwe and then Mohammed. Ahmed Al Hassan, Dr. Dampari led and coordinated the National Anti Armed Robbery Reward to Informant Initiative, which saw the arrest and prosecution of many notorious armed robbers across the country. For which reason people say that he's able to deal with the armed robbery menace. And as Director General in charge of welfare, Dr. Dampari introduced an innovative social welfare scheme where he led officers from the department to visit the homes of scores of sick and bedridden police officers across the country and then also introduce strategic medical interventions to facilitate their wellness. Moving on, in 2013, under the leadership of the then IGP, Mr. Mohammed Ahmed Alassan again, Dr. Dampari led a team of officers working day and night to restructure the armored car squadron that it was ACS back then unit into the formed police unit as we have it today within a record time of guess what just 10 weeks now the task had uh, the, the task he had also remained impossible for over 15 years the FPU has now become one of the police units undertaking internal police operations and international peacekeeping missions under the United Nations and, of course, the African Union. Now, as a Accra Regional Commander at one time, Dr. Dampari raised sufficient capital from the private sector to complete a new office complex and re-roofed 90% of all office buildings at the regional headquarters, which had been in a deplorable state for years. 
So still going through more of what he's been doing uh, as a, an officer all the way to becoming IGP. Aside his policing, Dr. Dampare previously worked as a research fellow and lecturer at King's College London, University of London. And then he also lectured at the University of Cape Coast, Ghana Institute of Management, Gimpa, Regent University he was there also, and then Data Link University College. Uh, that's what he's been doing as well. He also uh, became one of the pioneer lecturers at the Business School of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. And that's Dr. Akufo Dampari. And then finally, uh, Dr. Dampari has also served and continues to serve on several boards, including the IOKO, the governing board. He also was on the Data Link University College governing board, the Police Central Disciplinary Board, and then the Pumpkins Foundation Board. It's a philanthropic organization for underprivileged children, including those with autism. And then, as you all know, he's married with what? Six children. That's our 23rd substantive IGP of Ghana, Dr. George Ekufu Dampare. Congratulations once again. But like I said, he was appointed in acting capacity in July. Then in October, uh, he's been confirmed. Within that period, what has he been up to? Here's a news desk report. George Ekufu Dampare, until his appointment, was the director general in charge of administration at the service. He was the overall best recruit at the National Police Training School upon completion of his training in 1991. He became a chartered accountant at the age of 25. He is the youngest acting IGP to be appointed in the Fourth Republic. He is the eighth youngest to be given the position since 1957. COP Dampari holds a Doctor of Philosophy degree in Finance and Management from the King's College London and two Masters of Science degrees with distinction in Accounting and Finance from the London South Bank University UK and business system analyst and design from the City University of London. He has served as head director general of almost every department in the police service and is credited with the idea that led to the establishment of the police office of the Army General, which serves as a central point for accounting for arms and ammunition within the Ghana Police Service. Since assuming office and acting capacity, he has toured the entire country urgent police personnel to serve with integrity. Let's continue doing what is right, what is pleasing in the sight of God, what is pleasing in the sight of the community, what is pleasing in the sight of the law, and leave the rest with that. As long as you do what is right, as long as you are professional, I can assure you, you do whatever it takes to make your service career a pleasing, refreshing, and a wonderful one. Dr. Dampari comes to the job at a time the country is experiencing upsurge in armed robberies in some parts of the country, with some calling for increased police presence on the streets. President Kufuad, who recently announced financial clearance for the service to recruit 5,000 more personnel, said only discipline can help the Ghana Police Service win the fight against crime. It is important that discipline prevails throughout the service. This is a charge I give the Acting Inspector General of Police and the entire police administration. Without discipline and effective supervision, winning public confidence and support to fight crime will be very problematic. I cannot end without reiterating the support of government and I for the recent actions taken by the Acting Inspector General of Police, George Akufu Dampare which are eliciting strong backing from the population. He has so far vindicated my decision to repose trust in him to hold this high office. Well, for the political watchers, the IGP neutrality and professionalism of the service will guarantee cooperation. I expect that he should go on an agenda of rebranding the Ghana Police Service. The Ghana Police Service is not supposed to be seen as a warrior. The Ghana Police Service is supposed to be seen as a friend. He, he can be political because he, he owes his appointment to a political actor, but he shouldn't be partisan. Well, on that, that very last note then, that news desk report, today the president has been charging him to focus on the core mandate of policing and not become an appendage of the ruling party. And I'm sure it's a charge that the IGP is to keep.